Welcome to my presentation about the MBS FileMaker plugin. My name is Christian Schmitz and I'm the main developer behind the MBS plugin. In this presentation we like to update you on what's new in the plugins and instead of talking about everything we have we just want to show you what's new this year and last year and we have about 300 functions for you to show. The MBS FileMaker plugin is in development since 2006, so we have about 16 years now. Over the time we got 6700 functions and we are adding new ones every day. The plugin comes with over 600 example databases, so you can try all the functionality and often just copy scripts from the examples to your database to implement a feature. The MBS plugin is delivered as one plugin file to make it easy to install and uninstall. Only the parts you use and activate are loaded, so if you don't use it, it doesn't take a lot of memory. It's easy to install and update, since you only have to move one plugin file, and you can use the install plugin file script step to install it from a container field. Please check our install plugin update if needed example file to learn how to do this. We support several FileMaker versions and version 19.2 is supported by the plugin since version 11.1 .1 from last year. Then we added support for 19.3 and end of last year we also got a version for 19.4. For every new FileMaker version we do a few adjustments, we usually find a few little bugs and fix them, so always make sure you use uh, recent plugins. In general we support FileMaker 7 on Windows and newer and FileMaker 8.5 on MacOS and newer. And you can find older plugins on our archive on the website or email us. The MBS plugin can be used in FileMaker Pro, in FileMaker Server, for performing script on server, for scheduled scripts, for WebDirect, and on MacOS, Windows, and Linux. We are one of the first plugins to support Linux a few years ago, and since version 19.3 of FileMaker, you can use our plugin with the Data API 2. The MBS plugin can be used with the FileMaker iOS SDK to get the plugin into an iOS app and use all the functions on iOS. If you use FileMaker Go, you will have to use the Perform script on server, and we have a nice example for that uh, for creating barcodes, where we either run the barcode creation locally if the plugin is available, or delegate it to the server to um, make the barcode on the server. We do not support uh, FileMaker Cloud because uh, the FileMaker Cloud uh, from Claris doesn't allow plugin installation. But if you use any other cloud provider, you can certainly install the plugin on a cloud server. The MBS plugin doesn't register 6000 functions with FileMaker. That would blow up the calculation dialog. So we just install one central MBS function and also the same function is installed as a script step. And the first parameter to both is the function name. This function name can come from a calculation or from a field. After each function you can check for errors using our isError function. And so check if, if a function failed. And if you see any error messages, they have usually an MBS prefix, so you know where they are coming from. Please note that a lot of functions take reference parameters. So you may, for example, call JSON pass, get a number, pass this number to JSON format to refer to the same JSON object in memory, and later call JSON release. This way we can avoid having tons of parameters on functions because we can just create an object, keep it in memory, you can work on the object and then we can release it. This makes a lot of functionality much easier to use. 
we support Apple Silicon. We included that since version 11.2. So if you get one of the new M1 Macs, you should make sure that you use a recent FileMaker version supporting Apple Silicon and our plugin. To make it easy for you, we don't make two plugins, we make just one and put all the Intel and ARM code into one file. And we got a few utility functions for that. So we have system info is ARM to tell you if the current CPU architecture is an ARM based one. And we have system info is translated to tell you whether you are running an Intel app under emulation. And if you use the FileMaker iOS SDK, you can actually build an iOS app which then can run on a Mac. And we have this little function is iOS app on Mac to tell you whether the current application is built for iOS and running on a Mac. Then we support a lot of things on Linux. So the MBS plugin can be used on the Linux version of FileMaker Server. And we support all the Linux variants there. So you can use our plugin file on Ubuntu 18, on Ubuntu 20, and on CentOS 7.7 to 7.9. And that's all in one plugin file. And that was quite a challenge to make sure that you can use one plugin on all the platforms. For a couple of years, we support drag and drop. And you can accept files dropped from Finder or Explorer into your FileMaker solution. You get a script triggered and can decide what to do. We added last year the ability to use the whole window as the target for the drop, so you don't have to specify an area. And we allow you to actually drag files from that area out of FileMaker. So you can even make a container draggable and have it go to the desktop, for example. Then we got data detector. So Apple frameworks include some nice functionality to detect data in text. And that's used by Apple for the mail application as well as iMessage and others. So we can detect phone numbers, email addresses, URLs, postal addresses, flight numbers, and date and times. And it may be handy sometimes if the user just puts in some text and you can extract those values. And if you need something cross-platform, you can of course go with regular expressions and make your own, own little um, patterns to find those values. But it's nice to have something pre-made from Apple. Then if you work with uh, international bank account numbers, you can use our plugin functions for that to, for example, validate a bank account number. And the plugin has information from over 100 countries on their format of the IBANs. So we can format them. We can calculate checksums. We have regular expressions to find um, an international bank account number within some text. And we have example numbers for all the countries, so you can display them if needed in the user interface. Then MBS plugin can do a lot of with Excel documents using the LibXL. An additional library you can buy in addition to the MBS plugin. And then you can read and write Excel documents in the old and the newer Excel formats. We got recently a few functions to copy Roll columns or cells from uh, one location in, in a spreadsheet to another location. We also got a nice function uh, read value, which allows you to read the value of um, a cell and it gives you either a number or a text. So you don't need to check what's in the cell before you read it. Then we got functions to add and remove data validations. So you can add some calculation to the Excel spreadsheet to validate if the data is correct. And also we got auto filters, so you can define filters to automatically uh, show only the relevant data when the user opens the file in Excel. Then we have a lot of functionality for PDF documents with the Dyna PDF library. 
This is an additional library you also have to buy uh, for use with the MBS plugin on our website. And with that you can create PDFs, you can merge them, split, compress them, optimize your pages, uh, encrypt and decrypt PDF documents. You can extract contents like image and text. You can create form fields, fill them and later query them. And a lot of more. Here on the screenshot you see a few uh, things we made in the past for Mac, Windows, iOS, WebDirect. So you can use the plugin to create PDFs on the fly if needed with or without FileMaker's layouts and then process them. For example, we added a new functionality to save and sign a PDF file. So we had that before, but now we extended it to work with uh, longer keys. So the signature can now be based on uh, 4000 bit key length. We also got a function to put style text in a table. So you can use Dyna PDF to lay out your PDF page and use uh, tables provided by Dyna PDF. And there you can fill the cells with, uh, of course, with text and images and or PDF pages. And we got this nice function to convert the style text from what you have in a FileMaker field to the way Dyna PDF needs the styles. And so you can directly transfer style text to your table. Then we got the optimized PDF function. And that function is very nice because you can convert a PDF to a smaller version of the same PDF by reducing the, the image uh, resolutions, convert images to JPEG, clean up the file, like remove uh, unnecessary metadata. And recently we got a function there to convert text to outlines. So you can uh, make sure that your text can't be copied anymore because it's just vector graphics. And you can use it to convert to other color spaces like CMYK. So all the colors in the PDF are then converted to this other color space. You can use a Dyna PDF as a FileMaker iOS SDK in your iOS app. So you can use all the PDF functionality on the go. And our style text conversion can also be used to just put any style text on a, on a page there. And we added there recently the double underlined feature. So if you have any double underlined text in FileMaker, it will now show up as double underlined in the PDF. For Dyna PDF, we also added support for PDF A in the 2U and 3U variants. So if you have a need uh, to, to create such PDFs, you can do that with our plugin. Then we got new functionality for page breaks especially custom page breaks. As you see in the example screenshot here, we do output here text in three columns. That's by using our Dyna PDF set page break expression, where we put in a calculation to decide where to continue the text. If we create a PDF here, uh, we pass in uh, a long text, which actually fills something like 20 pages. And then uh, it's set to start on the first column on the first page. The calculation is executed when we reach the end of the first column. And then we pass in to Dyna PDF the rectangle for the second column. The text output continues. Then the calculation is called again and it points to the third column and then it's called again, and now it does make a new page and again tells Dyna PDF to continue on the first column and so on. And so we can output text over 20 pages easily and just have FileMaker tell Dyna PDF where to continue and you can define all your columns, how you like them. And of course, if you make a new page, you can load a, pre a template or place images as needed. And so it's very dynamically to use in FileMaker. Next, we got a nice example for using Zugwert and Factor X invoices. So that's a standard in Europe, I think, uh, where we have XML files embedded in a PDF with an invoice. So the XML is a representation for the machine and the PDF is a rep representation for the human to see or to print. 
And we had a few examples for that before, but now we got also an example which creates an XML as needed for such an invoice. Next we have SQL functions, especially SQL functions to other databases. This is an alternative to the ESS built into FileMaker, where you can connect to a database using a script, run some SQL, move records over from one side to the other, and then disconnect. So we have support for a couple of things like Microsoft SQL Server, Postgres SQL, MySQL, and a few others. And in the last year we added support for SQLite to use the Unicode libraries. Also we added extensions there for JSON, Math, and Geopoly. So you can use those extension functions in your SQL queries and use them with SQLite databases. We also added support for the DuckDB database, which is a little bit similar to SQLite, but it uses column-based storage, so it may be faster in some operations. Then we got uh, functionality for encryption for MySQL or MariaDB connections, and we improved our decimal number handling to avoid getting um, problems with precision, with double data type. So if you have a decimal column on your database, it should come with full precision to FileMaker. We have list dialog functions to show a list dialog to pick something. And we recently added there the headers and a filter field, so you can actually limit the items in your list box to only matching items for the filter. And this makes a picker dialog even easier to use um, since you can do search. And of course you can show uh, several columns and you can also put on each row a hidden value, a tag. So you can, for example, put there the record ID. Uh, we have functions for system information and you can query a few new things. First, you can query whether low power mode is enabled. So you can decide to skip some operations if the user wants to save power. Then you can query whether your FileMaker iOS SDK app runs on a Mac. So you can maybe do some things differently, like showing a different layout. Then for Linux, you can query the system information, which includes data about the CPU load and the RAM usage. So you can actually see how well your server is doing. We have some information on Windows uh, for the machine and the system, which tells you the CPU type and revision. Then we have an is Monterey function to tell you if it's a new operation system on macOS for version 12. And we have an is Windows 11 function to tell you whether it's Windows 11. For a couple of years, we have OCR functions in the plugin. We had them based on the Tesseract 3 engine and recently changed the plugin to load a version 4 dynamically. So we have an OCR load function to load the library, and then we can use the library loaded instead of the older one in the plugin. And this even works in server with several scripts running in parallel. In the future, we may also uh, move to version 5, but that's not yet done. Then we have barcode support. So the MBS plugin, as you may know, can create 80 different types of barcodes. And it can also recognize barcodes. And since um, the old library is a little bit outdated, we moved to support the setbar library to scan barcodes. And the new barcode scan function can actually detect several barcodes within one picture. And it supports EN, UPC, code 39, interleaved, and QR codes. So it may be handy to detect barcodes and pictures which you scanned, maybe with your phone or with a flatbed scanner. Then we have a functionality for doing custom functions in JavaScript. So you can define your own custom functions and either use our cross-platform JavaScript engine based on the duct tape library, 
or you use the JavaScript engine coming with WebKit on macOS and iOS. In both ways, uh, you can of course uh, define your custom functions and run them, and this gives you enhanced performance with a couple of things which you can do faster in JavaScript than in FileMaker calculations like regular expressions, uh, processing JSON and array functions. And please note that the JavaScript engine coming with WebKit is a little bit uh, newer and has more of the newer features compared to duct tape. Uh, all those custom functions in our plugin are handled by those three functions. So we have the JavaScript custom functions and the other JavaScript custom function. And we have the FileMaker custom functions where you can actually store your calculations for custom functions in a database, load them into the plugin and then execute them with our plugin. And here's the example database where we define a custom function using FileMaker expressions and call them with the MBS function fm.cf. For over 10 years, MBS plugin uses curl library to provide your functionality like up and download of data with HTTPS, FTP and SFTP. We can send and receive emails, including attachments. And we have a IMAP video on the website to show you how to receive emails and display them. We also can sign requests for AWS. And we have an example for S3 there. We can also do pre-signed URLs, so you can calculate a an URL for um, a file in your bucket. You can send this URL, for example, with an email, and it's then valid for a few days, where the user can click the link and download the file. And after the time passed, the URL becomes invalid. We also have a function to calculate OAuth signatures which can be handy for all the newer web services using that. We got a few functions for the clipboard. Um, the MBS plugin allows you to use the clipboard without fields, so you can just have scripts putting things on the clipboard without referring to a field on the layout. And we got recently new functions for PDF documents on the clipboard, so you can put a PDF on the clipboard or query it. Then we added support for style text for Windows, so we can now convert style text uh, to the clipboard and place it there as RTF and vice versa. And then we got new functions for the FileMaker data on the clipboard, and especially we got functions to get and set the XML for menus and menu sets. Then we have support for WebView 2 on Windows. This is using the Edge engine from Microsoft in FileMaker for WebViewer. And you can use our WebView functions to run JavaScript directly or to use the form functions to fill out web forms and submit them. And of course, you can get screenshots of your web page or print them or load HTML into the WebViewer. And very handy is also the isLoading function, which allows you to write a script to load a website and then wait until the page is fully loaded before you start your JavaScript functions. And if you need to, you can also use the show dev tools function to show the developer tools for your web view. Then we have functions to work on Word files. So you can read a Word file, modify it and write it back to disk. We recently got a contains function to check if a certain text is contained in a Word document and also a substitute function to go and find this text and replace it with something else. For our replacement of tags, we got a function to list the tags in the Word document. And you can now save the Word document back to a container field. We got quite a few file functions, like you can move, copy, delete, or rename files and folders as needed. All the basic operations are there. We can now also hide file extensions, like you can place a file on the user's desktop and make sure that the extension doesn't show. Then we can exclude files from Time Machine backups. 
which can be handy if you write a folder with some temporary files and you don't want them to be backupped. And we have the files audio cover art, which allows you to query the, the picture for an mp3 or mp4 file to show it as a preview. And our container read image file function is useful on macOS to read um, Hive or Hike images. So if you have one of those uh, newer image formats not supported in FileMaker directly, you can use this function to read it and convert it to a PNG file. If you have the need to show any uh, XML or JSON in your FileMaker file, you can use our colorize functions to colorize them. And there we now support dark mode, so you can decide whether you want to have the the bright version or the dark version. Then we have webhooks. Webhooks are a nice thing uh, where we run a little web server within the plugin so we can receive requests from other computers like uh, your phone system, the doorbell or your git server may send you a web request to notify you about an event and our plugin may receive the request and trigger a script. We optionally can do SSL if you have a certificate and we can either send an auto response to acknowledge that we got the request or you can use a script to respond uh, with whatever text you like to respond. This can work on FileMaker Pro, on iOS and on server. And it can also work with non-HTTP requests like some people have some medical devices or some scales which may use a socket connection, so they may send some data, but um, it may not be HTTP. Next, we have functions for custom dialogues in the plugin. And recently we added their support for text alignment, so you can use left, center, or right aligned text. And as you may know, uh, newer macOS versions tend to um, center align everything by default. Then we got functionality for Windows to import pictures. We had that with image capture functions on macOS for a long time, but now on Windows you can pick a camera, can uh, select the photos to import, and then run the import and get all the files into FileMaker. Next we have some useful functions for debugging. So our trace function logs all the plugin calls and now includes the parameter names. So your trace log is much easier to read because you see which parameter gets which value and you can easily spot if you pass the wrong parameter. But since trace produces a lot of output and slows down the processing, you can pause it if you need and resume later. So you can only turn it on for a script or two. Then we got the isError function to tell you if a previous call to an MBS function returned an error and set the error flag. But also we have another error flag, which you can clear with the clear error function. Then you can call a few MBS functions and on the end you can ask if you had errors. So instead of calling isError after each function, you can just call had errors on the end of the script and then see if any of the script calls failed. Then we have a function to query what parameters a function has. So the metadata used for the trace function is available to you to query and also you can query which platforms are supported by a function so you can dynamically decide what to call. Then for a couple of versions we support the FileMaker iOS SDK and we recently added support for using Apple Silicon code for the iOS simulator. So the simulator either runs on Intel code or on ARM code, depending on what type of MacBook you have. Then you can use iOS with DynaPDF and we provide um, DynaPDF frameworks for use on iOS from time to time. And we can use the sharing panel in uh, the iOS app and share files and we have a couple of more options compared to what FileMaker has to export our field content like we can share several files if needed or text with picture for sending a text message. 
you can use the uh, Quick Look Preview panel with our plugin to edit documents with uh, markup tools. So you can edit documents with markup tools included uh, with iOS and this only works on the iOS SDK and it allows you to change pictures or PDF and put annotations on it and then when the user saves a new PDF it gives you a script trigger so you can store the new PDF in a field. Also for iOS we have functions to change the text of our messages. For example here we have this um, dialog asking whether we should stop execution of a script and we can change the text to do you like to stop the export so we can actually tell the user what the script is doing. Then we have enhancements to FileMaker itself. So we can extend the developer tools on macOS for FileMaker, like we can colorize scripts and calculations and we recently added new functionality there to copy the content of the custom functions dialog so you can actually use the plugin to query what custom functions are available in the solution if you like to write scripts to automatically document uh, what custom functions are in which file. So um, for set variable and set field we got option click so you can use um, the option key to directly jump into the calculation as well as double click on a field to automatically jump into the field uh, when you press the option key. Then um, we have extensions to the calculation dialogs. So for example, we have those buttons on the bottom where you can check the syntax of your current text, evalu evaluate the current formula in the context of the current layout behind you and you can add and remove table occurrences if needed and those can be very handy when you have to edit your calculations. We also got tooltips for MBS functions so if you hover over our MBS function we can actually show you the tooltip with uh, the parameters so you can easily know what parameters are available. We also got a links there for the MBS functions to directly point to our documentation but you have to turn that on with the preference dialog and if you turn on the links in the latest version you also get links for the get functions in all the different languages supported by FileMaker to point directly to the documentation page on the Claris homepage so you can look up what uh, the get function returns for example. Then we have functionality to test custom functions. So the MBS plugin has those buttons to check syntax and e execute the current calculation and with some special three slash commands you can uh, define test values for your, uh, for your parameters and then evaluate them to see if the correct value is coming back. Then we got auto-completion of variables. So we have global variables which uh, the plugin collects uh, as, as it sees them and then we have the local variables as defined in a let statement and we have of course the script variables as defined in the script for the current calculation. So if you are on a given line in, in your script and you open the dialog you see all the script variables defined above the current line and autocomplete will automatically show you the list if you type in the dollar symbol and so you can enjoy uh, autocompletion and have less typos on your variable names. Also we can autocomplete MBS functions. As you see here we type something and the plugin suggests the function name and so we can just continue to type until we get it and then it also autocompletes the parameters. So we can then put in whatever parameter we need. Then uh, for the colorizing rules we can now define wild cards for things like here debugging or deprecated 
so we can highlight them in the text whenever they show up. For the list of scripts, in the script workspace we got a context menu extension to sort scripts by name, a scanning and descanning, so you can well finally get your script sorted by name. Then we can show IDs in the user interface and we have IDs for the scripts, for the fields, for the tables, for the layouts and now new also for value lists. And um, the reason is simple, the name of an item may change but the ID stays so, so you can at any time of course query the name for the given ID. For the debugger we got some help for you, like we have some tooltips which can show you what uh, text we find in the, in the script line and then if we find a variable or a field name we can evaluate that and then show you the value. This works of course only for things we can detect, like we can't really handle spaces there. If you need more on the plugin, please go to our website, read our documentations, the blog, watch a few of the videos and please sign up for a newsletter or trial license on the website if you need them. We have a nice video to show you how to install the plugin and use a few of the examples. And with that, thank you for watching.